okay uh, hello everyone it is indeed inspiring to see you back again uh, today is the fourth day of our database uh, data fest celebration so i once again welcome you all for this uh, data fest celebration and today is the second day of sql bootcamp so uh, let's me share a small video for uh, of uh, data fest celebrations and then we will continue with the uh, sql bootcamp Hello everyone. It's indeed inspiring to see you back again. We are celebrating our 8th foundation day as a celebration. We have arranged multiple events including boot camps, competition, hackathon, mock interviews and insightful guest lectures by our industry expert. So stay tuned. The schedule would be it would be starting from 13th march to 27th march of 2023 so subscribe the channel and mark the bell icon to always be updated as our time would be 4 pm onwards on youtube which is online live during the sessions our instructors will provide you certain guidelines make sure to follow them and many times technical issues may arise during the session so take a chill pill as we would provide you all the recordings of the boot camp in the playlist of the channel but still if you have any problem feel free to contact the instructor for your help before connecting make sure your internet speed is better or good and of course join few minutes early so that you don't miss anything all right these are the important links available for you in the description through which you can register yourself all right give the attendance also during the sessions with a particular module code as well as these particular link will be provided during the sessions as well so and the most challenging part is the task submission the links would be provided you in the descriptions to submit the task or the assignments given during the sessions so make sure to complete them and follow the instructions and submit the links in the particular google forms you would be eligible for the certification if the assignments are being submitted as well as the attendance is also mandatory for the particular model as per the days provided all right as well as there is a note during the sessions we also have some small quizzes and the exciting part is that the winning participant will get the exciting goodies and hampers and the most active participants will be getting a chance of internship so stay tuned and be ready and be motivated as well as here some social media guidelines are being provided for you to complete the assignment so first thing you have to post your assignment which should be in the pdf format or the picture on the linkedin tagging the indeed inspiring infotech and respective trainer copy the post submit it to the provided google form add multiple and innovative hashtags and hence you will be eligible for the certificate so let's meet soon and keep learning hello everyone it's indeed inspiring to see you back again we are celebrating 
our eighth foundation. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, now let me share some uh, information regarding today's bootcamp. Uh, today is the first day of uh, our SQL bootcamp. Uh, let me just share my screen now. All right. So today is the second day of SQL bootcamp. Uh, for the last three days, we are learning Python and then SQL. For the first two days, we have completed Python bootcamp. And yesterday, we had our first day of SQL bootcamp. So those of you who were not able to attend the Python bootcamp uh, or the first day of SQL bootcamp, they can go to our YouTube channel and watch the videos, uh, the recorded sessions uh, on our YouTube channel. So these are some guidelines uh, for the SQL bootcamp. Uh, as you all know that the, this particular bootcamp will be of two days, uh, starting from yesterday. Today is the second day. The dates are 14th of, uh, 15th of March and 16th of March. And the timing would be 4 p.m. onwards. Uh, next, the uh, equipment, uh, you all know that uh, this session is uh, live uh, streamed on YouTube. So be sure that you have uh, sufficient internet connection so that uh, live stream on YouTube works properly. Uh, this is the course content for SQL Bootcamp. Uh, yesterday, we uh, saw some uh, introduction to SQL types of languages in SQL, keys and constraints, clauses, aggregate functions, subqueries, unions, and joins. And today also, we will be covering some pa pa uh, the remaining part of yesterday's uh, session. Uh, next, uh, these are some basic guidelines that uh, participants uh, should be attentive during the session. Uh, make sure that their internet speed is working properly so that uh, no hiccups occur during the session. Uh, next is uh, tools and equipments also that laptop and MySQL software should be installed in your PC. Uh, regarding certifications, uh, we are providing certificates for this uh, SQL bootcamp also, uh, so that uh, uh, for that you need to uh, attend both the sessions, attendance is mandatory, and the assignments are also mandatory. You have to submit your assignments, uh, post on social media, LinkedIn and then submit to the uh, Google form. Uh, during session, uh, we are also providing quiz and uh, for the winners of the quiz, we are also providing the prizes. So make sure that after the session, you participate in the quiz and uh, try to win the prizes. Uh, most uh, active participants during these bootcamp periods uh, will get a chance of uh, internship with us. So be ready and uh, be participants in the uh, sessions, uh, try to answer the questions uh, asked by the instructor, sir. Uh, these are some guidelines for the social media posts that you should tag uh, our handles and uh, other handles also. So, indeed, inspiring and our uh, guide uh, guide for the today, uh, Ritvi, sir, and other uh, institutions you should uh, tag. Uh, also, there are some hashtags that you should add during your. Uh, posting of your uh, social media post, uh, such as uh, programming, SQL, and all the uh, tags of learning. So you your posts will hi get highlighted on social media platforms. These are the links that we will be providing during the session. So keep uh, note of that during the session. Uh, next, uh, yes. And also we are uh, open for internship applications. So those of you want to uh, want internship with us, they can apply on this link. Uh, we will be sharing this uh, link with you later. So if you want to learn and uh, part, uh, get a practical knowledge with us, so be sure that uh, you should, uh, you will uh, apply on these links. And uh, also as a part of database competition, uh, database celebration, we have boot camps and also we have competitions. So competitions are different from boot camps. So these are the some uh, competitions they are there that we are organizing: uh, quiz competitions, numeric competitions, dashboard competitions, uh, which include Power BI, Table, Excel, and also hackathons. The more information regarding these competitions are uh, available on our YouTube channel. You can watch uh, detailed explanation of uh, these uh, competitions. Uh, today is the start of this competition, so the 
submissions for these competitions are opening from today so you can uh, participate in this uh, regarding quiz competitions uh, tomorrow uh, 17th of march we have first round of quiz competitions so uh, be ready that uh, tomorrow we have a first round of quiz competitions it will be after the session so tomorrow we tomorrow also we have session after the session we will be conducting quiz competitions so the link for the quiz competition will be shared at the exact time it will be after the competition and anybody can participate in the, uh, this quiz competition so uh, make sure that you also uh, participate and also you can tell your friends that uh, you can participate in this quiz uh, the curriculum for this quiz or the scope of the quiz is uh, computer science domain and also data science domain so be ready that uh, tomorrow we have quiz competition and last but not least uh, we are uh, organizing and uh, we are launching a campaign today uh, we have launched uh, education for all campaign uh, now uh, that we know that uh, during uh, so many people in our lives work for education tirelessly so if you know anybody that uh, they are working uh, for education for the cause of education so we are inviting entries of those people and uh, we will be awarding them for their efforts to the education field so uh, for the guidelines for that also we will be releasing soon so make sure that uh, you keep uh, eye on our social media social media post uh, so we are providing edu hero award for those working for education and we are also trying to uh, contribute in the education field by working in a education for all campaign uh, also we are we are uh, sharing more details uh, on our youtube channel and our social media post so i hope everyone will uh, keep eye on that mm, so let's now conclude me for the introduction part uh, now i will uh, hand over to the ritwish sir yeah, ritwish sir will be taking our session for today's sql bootcamp uh, request uh, i request ritwish sir to take over from now yeah a very good evening to all of you i hope you all are doing well so once again we have started with the next day of boot camp so i hope you all are excited right so let's start with the session so in today's session we would be covering some topics like joins in sql we we would be seeing about uh, sub queries in sql then we would be seeing aggregate functions in sql all right so i hope uh, you would enjoy that so let's start so let me share my screen and yeah so just confirm can you uh, can you see my screen everyone can you see my screen yeah all right so the very first thing that we are uh, doing today is about sub queries right so to understand sub queries let us check out what are sub queries so if i tell you that sub queries are queries inside another query right so if you search on google that if you if you search sub queries so sub queries in sql if you search so what it says is a sub query is a query within another query right so what happens is sometimes uh, in database that is a relational database management system uh, there are you know situations wherein uh, you are not able to find a specific value or a specific uh, you know output from a single uh, table uh, that's the point wherein you come up with the point that is sub query right so here in sub query what we do is we combine two uh, tables and we find out the output so it could be two tables it could be three tables and uh, in a query we have another inner query and this is how we call it as a sub query all right so to start with this sub query let us see i will just type mysql tutorial all right so you all can also refer it 
MySQL tutorial. Here we have uh, the official website of MySQL tutorials. Here you can click and uh, we will try to see a, a database, right? So if you go down, uh, you will click on getting started with MySQL. So once you click on getting started with MySQL, you will see an option called download a MySQL sample database. All right. Once I click here, you will see that a sample database would be there. All right. So here is the part download MySQL sample database. Now, once you click here, you will see that a zip file will get downloaded as it, ha it has been mentioned that a zip format file will be get uh, downloaded. All right. So if you click on here, it will get downloaded. So if I click here, you can see it is asking for downloading. I have already downloaded it. So let me show it to you. So once downloading a zip file, you know what is the next step. The next step is to extract it, right? So once you extract it, you will get uh, the, the, uh, the exact, uh, you know, the file. So let me show you. So the file is, yeah, it should be here. Uh, just a second. All right. Uh, hmm. So I'm not able to find the file, it's okay. So let us move on. What you have to do is uh, once you get the file, once you extract the file, uh, after extracting the file, you just uh, have to go to the properties and in properties, you would see, uh, you know, in properties, you will see a security uh, option. And in this security option, you will see the, uh, uh, this part that is the whole path along with the file name at the end. All right. So you have to copy this. So this is a zip file. You have to extract it and you have to copy the whole object name that you can see here. That is the whole path along with the file name at the end. So once you copy it, you come to the, come to your MySQL command line client. I hope you all are aware with this. And because this is a dot SQL file. Okay. Once you extract it, you will find that it is a dot SQL file. So because uh, for uh, importing an SQL file, dot SQL file, what you have to do is you have to write source, right? Once you write source and then you copy paste the whole path. All right. So if, if it is not happening, let me extract it here for you all. Okay, so here is the file. You can see the extension called as SQL file. All right, I'm opening it in properties, in security I'm going and I'm copying the object name, the whole object name I will copy and I will come back to my MySQL command line and with the help of the source keyword, I will just paste this whole uh, path along with the file name at the end. That is my SQL sample database.sql. Okay, so once you do this, you press enter. What will happen? Because this dot SQL file is a script file of uh, having a structured query language kind of, uh, you know, input inside it. So it will execute each and every query. That's why you can see that query. Okay. Uh, executed query. Okay. Executed. So it is getting executed. All right. So once it got executed, you will see the database inside your uh, command line client. Now, let me show you what we, what we have to do next. Uh, this is a good database. So what you can do is show databases. All right. So once you click on show databases, you will see a database called, what was the file name? The file name was classic models, right? So what I will do is the next step is using, using classic models and semicolon. So database changed. All right. Next part is show tables. I hope you are aware about uh, the small basic uh, concepts. Uh, so in classic models, you can see customers, employees, offices, order details, orders, payments, product lines, and products. Now, because we call uh, this thing as a relational database management system. All right. So because it has relations, so you should be understanding that we have something called data modeling. We have something called ER modeling, right? ER models. So by just looking at the tables, you can understand which table is having link with another. 
all right suppose if i say employees and offices obviously in an office employees are there so there could be a relation in between these two second thing is customers and orders obviously a customer places an order and with this we have order details also and because a customer uh, placed an order there must be a payment kind of thing also so customer orders and payment is also there again if customer is ordering ordering something definitely it would be a product right so you can see the product table also so in this way you can see this whole classic model database is having different tables and they have relation in between them to understand this relation you can again go back to the link that was there here down uh, down the line you will see that er kind of thing is there entity relation diagram is being shown here mm -hmm. uh, which comprises of employees products order details customers offices and all those uh, tables that i just introduced you all right so i hope you are able to understand some of them are having uh, self joins some, some of them are having one to many relation and many other concepts that you might be uh, knowing uh, earlier all right so let's start with the sub queries now as i said sub query means that a query inside another query right so uh, there are instances wherein we need these kind of things suppose if i uh, go to uh, the employees table all right so to just to uh, uh, you know just to look uh, the uh, the records inside the employees table what i will do is i will write select star from employees okay and i will just do as limit 10 so you can see a proper table of employees table wherein it comprises of employee number last name first name extension email office code reports to and job title so you can understand reports to means uh, as particular employee uh, to whom he reports that means uh, the reports to is having some certain number that could be a manager or could be a boss or something else all right so i hope you are able to understand this all right so okay okay let me zoom in let me zoom in i just saw the message wait wait let me zoom in now is it clear is it clear now yeah i hope uh, i hope it is clear now let's move further so i just what i did is select star from employees limit 10 so uh, in this query what we can do is uh, if we can find out uh, something related to uh, salary or not all right so maybe there is uh, nothing like salary okay so again show tables here we have uh, customers okay uh, customers are there and similarly other tables are there so what i will do is i want suppose uh, there is an employee called thompson okay there is an employee called thompson so thompson is having an employee id as 1166 okay now suppose the company gives uh, the employee number as and when an employee enters so if someone is entering after thompson he will get an employee id as 1188 after 1166 okay so after uh, thompson it is a uh, uh, fireli kind of uh, employee name and after fireli we have peterson that is having an employee number as 1216 all right so similarly if we understand this part what i want is i want the list of uh, the employees who uh, you know who came after thompson all right so if if i want something like this what can we do is yeah what can we do we can apply a sub query or not so suppose what we will do is uh, suppose uh, if we want uh, the employee the la the last name the first name and i want all those uh, entries who are having employee number after 1166 that means obviously it would be greater than 1166 all right so let us try creating a sub query okay so suppose here i write select <clears throat> uh i can select what all things are there 
first name and last name okay select first name comma last name from uh, employees where and what it was it was employee number right where employee number is greater than right employee number is greater than i write select uh it could be something else uh, select uh, first name suppose select star from uh, employees only where where employee number number was greater than what was it it was 1166 1166 all right so should contain one column okay so it is saying it should contain only one column all right so no worries okay subquery returns more than one row all right all right so no worries we will try something else all right suppose i uh, go to uh, products table select star from products and i give limit as 10 all right so this is the products table having the this thing limit as 10 all right so what i want to do is suppose i want something related to product wherein i want uh, average range let me check uh, describe products so we have here as a buy price all right so i want uh, uh, buy price uh, we can use an aggregate function right in aggregate function we will use buy price and we will try to understand uh, yeah it is showing buy price as decimal yeah so let me uh, let me try this so select suppose product name comma product vendor okay i want to understand uh, what all vendors are selling a product uh, product ranges uh, we are considering the average range of a product and i want to know uh, that uh, suppose a range is there average range is suppose thousand so who all vendors are selling those products uh, who, whose range is greater than thousand if i want to understand that so what i will do select product name comma product vendor from products products where buy price where buy price is greater than i can write select i can write select suppose i write average as i want the average part so buy price from products itself because uh, in a in a single query i can't understand uh, what is the average buy price and then what is uh, the product name and the product vendor name in a single query right so i can use this unknown column product name okay so underscore is not there i will remove underscore and here you can see the list of those products who are being sold out with these vendors who have uh, uh, the product uh, you know buy price greater than the average okay now simply if you want to understand what is the average buy price so what i can do is i can remove this whole thing and you will understand the average buy price right so i can remove this whole so the average buy price is coming as 54 so these all vendors these all vendors are having the buy price they are selling uh, they are buying and selling those products that are having the value greater than 54 
all right so i hope you understood this is a this was a simple example of sub query wherein in a particular query only we are not able to find out what we are not able to find out the uh, output so in a single line only we are using uh, a query inside another query okay so i hope you understood this so similarly we uh, we can use another part also and we can uh, maybe we can use another table suppose i have another table let me check here uh, yeah so we have a amount column payments and amount right so let us use uh, another database we have another database as called as hr so let me show you that also select star from employees and limit 10 i will be using this okay so in here you can see that we have salary and we have uh, suppose hire date we have job id we have first name last name department id age and so so what we can do is suppose i want i want to understand those people who are having the salary greater than david's so suppose david is having some salary and i want to extract those uh, employees who are earning more than david right so what uh, so what can we do uh, so what we will do is uh, i will describe it for further reference and i will do select so i want the first name right so select first name comma last name and suppose uh, i want salary also from employees where salary right so i will write where salary is greater because we are saying uh, the salary of david so we don't know the salary of david right first we will uh, need to extract the salary of david and definitely we can apply it here but to find it we need to run two queries so what i will do is i will combine these uh, i will combine these uh, two things and i will create a sub query so here i will write select uh, we can say select salary from employees select uh, salary from employees where uh, where am a uh, first name first name is equal to as you know ki uh, it is uh, string that is varchar so i will use david in this way okay sub query returns more than one rows okay so what we need to do here is all right okay okay all right sub query returns more than one rows all right so let's uh, skip this one uh, for solving it we need more time so let us okay no worries let us move to the next part so in this way we can use uh, different types of sub queries and you can take examples from internet also that will help you about sub queries uh, right so i hope you are able to understand that what is a sub query right so this means that a single query uh, if you are running you are not able to get the answer so what you have to do is you have to use another query inside it so this in this way it will help you right so this is about sub query uh, let us move to the next part and the next part is joins 
so in joints we have different types of joints to understand it we can have a simple diagram all right joints in sql we can find and in images we can directly go you will see uh, different images that tells that what all different joints are there because we are talking about relational databases right we have different relations so a single table can't uh, you know satisfy our need uh, that we are able we are trying to find out so we need different type of joints so that we can extract the meaningful information out of it so we have different joints like we have joint we have full uh, we have full join also we have right join we have left join and we have inner join also right so here you can see we have inner joints also so in this way we can understand uh, the concept of joints here so let us understand so here we uh, we can create a simple uh, tables also for uh, uh, understanding the joins part all right and uh, <clears throat> suppose i have created a database called as joins right so i can show you what all tables are there so we have some tables like uh, t1 and t2 so select star from t1 and select star from t2 right so this is about the tables that are there inside uh, this database and you can just understand we have key and value again in another another table we have key and value uh, this is important the thing is uh, it is not necessary always that the columns that you are selecting on the basis of which you would be applying joins it is not necessary that the column names should be the same the thing is the data type that means the format of the uh, you know data should be similar that's it that is uh, required so here we have t1 and t2 so what we can do is we can uh, try and understand joins with this so the very first join that comes is uh, we call it as inner join all right so we can specify it also and even if we don't specify by default it is inner join only so what does inner join does inner join does is it takes the common uh, the common uh, you know the values the common values and it shows only that part suppose we have some common values of t1 that is also there in t2 so those uh, part will only be uh, displayed that part will only be displayed right we have a uh, few uh, you know few uh, values that are there in t2 and they are they also they are also present in t1 so we will be making use of inner join in uh, in that such case if we want only the common uh, you know output we uh, we want only the common records from t1 and t2 so let's try to understand so what we will do is we can select and just not to have a confusion because you can understand that for t1 table we have the similar column names that are similar with the t2 key underscore and value again key underscore value are having the same column names so to uh, so not to have a uh, ambiguity not to have a confusion we can use alias name right we can use a short uh, name for all the tables that we are using right so we are using two tables in this so we can make use of it suppose i uh, select uh, i select uh, key underscore right so i will write t right i will write uh, suppose a a dot key and uh, one table i will give the name the alias name as a and another will i will be giving it as uh, b all right so suppose i write select a dot key and then a dot value comma b dot key underscore comma b dot value uh, i can write from t1 right and i can specify inner join 
inner join and after t1 i can write t1 a because uh, we have given the name of t1 as a right so after this we can specify like this way yeah so uh, from t1 a inner join t2 and we have given the name as b and uh, what we can do is on the basis of right on suppose if i write a dot on the basis of key underscore is equal to b dot key underscore i hope you are able to understand suppose uh, if i execute this we are getting the output like this way so uh, the very first thing these a these key underscore and value are from the first uh, table that is t1 and these key value pairs are from the t2 part and uh, the basis of joining these two tables are key underscore so just check out so what they are doing is they are finding that from a uh, from a that is key underscore of t1 it is one so you can see that one is combining with this one that is having one and a again you can see that this one a is again combining with this one it is getting repeated understood so again uh, this one now why this one is getting repeated in uh, one two three four five six six times why is it repeating it is repeating because it is matching records one is matching with this one that is having the value as a all right again this one a is also getting a match from another that is having one b so you can see one a and one a are getting repeated why because they got two different matches again you can see one b and one b they are repeating because they get again two different matches again you can see one c and one c they are repeating because they got again two different matches right so here you can see uh, this these two columns not these two columns i would say i would say these this key underscore column is getting repeated because of this all right so i hope this is inner join you are able to understand and the output is coming as 10 records now you can understand how 10 because uh, in t1 table it is eight records and in t2 table again it is eight records now how 10 is coming you can understand if you are well aware with the joins uh, these kind of questions only come in uh, your interviews okay uh, they will give you a simple table like this and they will say uh, if these uh, records are there what will be the output of inner join or what will be the output of left uh, outer or uh, right outer they will uh, ask you questions like this so i hope you are able to understand that uh, how 10 records are coming because they are finding the match on the basis of key underscore because i have given the basis as key underscore all right so this was about inner join so we can talk about uh, the next part that is uh, that is the left one let us check so, yeah the left join so in left join again what we have to do is suppose uh, i take the same i take the same query here what we have to change is instead of uh, writing inner join we can write left join so uh, left join what it will do is it will uh, focus only on the left uh, left table that is t1 because we have specified left join and to its left it is t1 so t1 would be the left table and it will just focus on a left table and according to the left table it will look for the right table so left join means everything that means uh, the matching records or whether it is having non-matching records from the right table all the records will come from t1 okay this means that the left table the whole table will come okay and from right 
what all things will come? Only the matching records will come. What are matching records? Those records that are present in T2 and T1, both. So those records will be coming from the right table. All right. So let us check the syntax. The, uh, the syntax says that select A from, from uh, the first table that is A. We are selecting key and value. And uh, from uh, the next table, we are selecting uh, again key and value. And we have given, uh, we have specified from T1 and left join T2 on the basis of this. Let us uh, execute it and understand. Now, can you tell me how many records will be there in the output? Suppose in inner join, it is coming 10 records. Now, can you answer me that how many records will be there in the left join? If I show you the, if I show you these two tables. Yes. If I show you these two tables, can you tell me what will be the output? Yes, anyone? Yes. I hope uh, you are there and you are able to write something in the matching value in both tables. No. I'm asking if we use the left table, left join, and the left table would be T1. T1 would be the left table and T would T2 would be the right table. What will be the output quickly? So as I mentioned, left join means that everything from the left will come. That is whether it is matching or it is non-matching, right? Everything will come. Okay. So Kiran is saying maybe 12. Madhuri is saying 10. All right. So let us check. So I have written the query already and let us check what will be the output. So here you can see the output is coming 12. Okay. So how this output is coming 12, you can, you should understand <clears throat> because uh, again, we are matching the records on the basis of key. That is first point. So you can understand that, uh, from a specific table, these records are getting, uh, repeated till the time they are getting matched, right? Because you can see this is a table that is having, this is the right table actually, because in right table, you can see null values that are not there. So if you go and cross check, you will find that there is no key. There is no key called four in T2. Okay. T2. If you go and check, there is no key called T uh, four. There is no key called four. Can you find? No, but you can find it in four. So what is happening? check this. Uh, we are doing it on the basis of, let me show it here. We are doing it on the basis of key. So the first key is one. So one is having a match with this, this, and this. And that's why one B is getting repeated with one A, one B, one C. Right. Again, if 10 is coming, you can see 10 is having only one match. So 10 will repeat once. So what I will say, uh, the three records of this will come, one record of this will come and next four is there. No, but four will come because I have said this is the left table. So four will come. So this one will come again. One is there one with a because one is there again. It will match three of them. So again, you can see three. Uh, if I say two, two is coming once. So you can see it will come once again, another two, it will come again once four. Okay. Again, four is coming. You can see, uh, again, four is not there. It will be coming and three, three is there. Yes. Three is there. So again, three will also come. So we can just count it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Can you count it? One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 
12. I hope you understood why 12 is coming. <clears throat> Can you just confirm? Because we are saying we are doing left join LJ, where this is the left table and this is the right table. You understood? It will not be uh, 10 records. All right. So this is how interview questions will come, wherein you found that this is the left table and this is the right table. And because we are doing left join, so everything from left will come and only matching records from right will come. And that is how we counted it. You can see this. Th these all things we counted. Right. Okay. Now let's move to the next part. I hope you understood the concept of I hope you understood the concept of left join. Now, if I say you, <clears throat> what will be the output of right join? What will be the output of right join? Yes. Anyone? If I, if I write the similar thing and <clears throat> I will just change the keyword from left to right now you can check because i have uh, i have mentioned right join so you can see uh, to the right it is t2 and to the left it is t1 so it will take all the records from t2 right and it will just match it with t1 so uh, how many records it will be there in uh, right join for these two tables in on your screen that is t2 and t1 what will be the output how many records will be there quickly yes let me know the answer i'm waiting for your responses quickly you can see there are eight records in each of the table t1 and t2 Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, there is no response till now. There should, I was expecting a few responses. I can't see any response. Okay. So let us see. You can see in right join again, it is coming 12 records. Now, how is it so? Again, let us count because I took right as uh, the base. I will say right as the base because right table is T2. Let's consider. So you can see if I take a T2 as the base, if I take T2 as the base, suppose T2 is the <clears throat> right table and we are doing right join. All right. RJ means right join. So we will give privilege to R. That means right table and followed by left table privilege to R means full full means all the records will get executed executed means it will retrieve all the records so suppose uh, and on the basis of key all right on the basis of key let us understand the first record is having the key as one so this one will match with how many one this and this so this means one and two two records will come <clears throat> next one we have this one that is having the value as b so this will be again matching with this one and this one right then again one is there this one will match with this one and this one again two is there now this two will match with one and two all right so again i'm writing here i will write directly two okay now three three is there three is there it is matching i will write one 11 is there no 11 is not there so i will write it here one because 11 will come because this is getting the privilege all the records will come 11 14 is there no if 14 is there it is not there again it will come from here 10 where is 10 yes 10 is there 10 is coming once so again it will come one now if we if we total it we will get 12 3, all right, this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. 
Understood. This is called as right join, wherein we are giving the privilege. We can say privilege or we can understand it in our own way. We will say that right table will be getting the priority because right table will have all the records, whether it is matching or it is not matching. All the records will come from the right table and from left table, only those columns, only those records will come that are common in both. Okay. I hope you understood. Can you confirm yes or no by typing yes or no? Can you just confirm with by typing yes or no? Okay. All right. Similarly, we have a concept of uh, self-join also. You must have seen it uh, in, maybe it, it, it could be in employees table, it could be in students table, it could be in doctors table, it could be in uh, any table we can have self-join. Because let me tell you, if, in, if uh, it is there in employees table, an employee could be a normal employee, an employee could be a manager also. Because obviously at the end, that manager is an employee to the company. Again, a CEO is there, R right? CSO level, CEO level, these all levels are again, they are employees of the uh, organization. So again, these, uh, these names of the employees will be coming under employees table only. So we can make a self join, right? Similarly, doctors, whether it is a senior doctor or it is a junior doctor, it is a doctor. So it will come inside a doctor table. So again, self-join could be there. So I hope you understood the concept of joins. Again, you can refer it. And uh, with the diagram, you will understand it better that you can see here. That is different type of joins that we can perform in uh, SQL. Now, different questions could, co uh, could come in your interview. That is why we are, why we need joins. Okay. Why do we need joins? If I, uh, if I just ask you, what is the simple thing? Give me a simple answer. Why we need joints. So the thing is, uh, there could be many answers. Uh, there could be many different ways in which you can answer. One such way could be that because we are working on relational database management system, or we are working on RDBMS relational databases, wherein we have multiple relations. So to you know, uh, to tackle or to understand these relations, we use join. Using these joins, we can join two tables and we can get the information that we want, a specific information. Either we can join two tables, we can join three tables on basis of something, right? Obviously, you need to join it on the basis of something. So by joining these tables, we get our output because it is not only one table, right? Normalization tell us that there should be multiple tables and because there are multiple tables, we need joins to understand it better, to get the output, to get the analysis done. We need joins. All right. So this could be one such uh, point in which you can explain why do we new, need joins. Okay. I hope you understood. Now, uh, the next point would be understanding aggregate functions. Again, so aggregate functions are very simple to understand. Uh, yeah, so what all different aggregate functions are there? Can you tell me? Can you just count on what all different aggregate functions are there? Quickly, let me know. What is aggregation? Let us try to understand aggregation. Aggregation means that a single output should be there. All right. A single output. Suppose if I tell you that if I'm sitting in a place wherein we I have multiple computers, all right, that uh, that means I can say that I'm sitting in a, a computer lab. Suppose so uh, I can perform aggregation here. So what aggregation could be there? I will just say what is the total sum? What is the total count? Suppose what is the total count of uh, computers that are there in the library, computer lab? suppose. So uh, we can say it is 20, 30. What is this? This is called as aggregation. This means that we are uh, concluding it with the help of uh, a single output. We are getting a single output, right? 
suppose aggregate functions in <coughs> SQL. You can see some aggregate functions like average, <coughs> count, right? Maximum, minimum, grouping. And uh, this way, we have different type of aggregate functions. All right. So to understand it, we can definitely uh, go for uh, this part. <coughs> Let me start. So here only, I can take out the total count. Uh, <clears throat> so you can see that select uh, count star from table name, right? So uh, this could be T1. And uh, you can understand that uh, the total count is coming as eight. These are the total records that are coming from uh, the T1 table, right? So this is about the total count. Now we can also perform average, but uh, this will not have a meaning. But again, to, to make you understand, we can find out. Because we have key uh, as the column and we have the values as we have the values as integers, right? So I can definitely take out the average, right? Of this. What is average? You, you know what is average, right? It is the mean. So what I can do is select average of, <clears throat> uh, average of, uh, suppose I take uh, key underscore from T1 again, select average. So you can see that the average coming out is 3.3750. Uh, similarly, this is again an aggregate function because uh, in input, what, what thing will be there in input, all the records inside the key column will be going as an input, but the output will only be one. All right. The output will only be one. So this is how uh, we can consider it as average. And again, if I use, uh, uh, if I want to understand the minimum value in a specific column. So again, I can use select minimum of again key suppose uh, from T1, you can understand that the minimum output, the minimum value that is there is one. Similarly, I can understand it with the maximum part, the maximum uh, value in the key column for the table T1 is 10. So these are aggregate functions that are giving only one value out of it. All right. So I hope you are able to understand, right? We started with subqueries. Subqueries meant that uh, query inside another query. All right. We had uh, we had uh, written some queries and we got some errors, right? So to rectify those errors, we can go back and uh, again we can describe employees and <clears throat> use HR. I will do and I will select describe employees and in this employees, I chose a subquery called this way, right? So in here, we wanted a, a normal change and that change was from employees where salary in, suppose if I write salary in, you will get the output. Okay. There is one mistake that I was using, uh, you know, comparing operator that is greater, less than instead of that, we can use in. So there is again a technique in subqueries. We can either use greater than less than or in not in and similarly other kind of, uh, you know, keywords. So what, what I used here is I'm selecting first name, last name and salary of those employees whose salary is in. Why we are using in because we are giving a, we are giving a <coughs> specific value, right? Where salary in, suppose I'm writing select salary from employees where first name is David. I wanted the output and the output, uh, the output was like all those employees who are earning, who are earning greater than the David. One, right. So suppose David is earning 4,800. You are getting only those records who are having the salary greater than 
David salary, right? So you can see that these people are having who are earning greater than David salary. So I hope you understood in this way, we are able to uh, find out, we are able to find out the subquery part and uh, yeah, we can take a small break and we can take a uh, break of two minutes and we can resume again. All right. A two minutes break till then you can just re recall that what all things we did is uh, we used subqueries, we used joins, we used aggregate functions, right? So you just recall within two minutes, we will be resuming. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, let me announce few things and uh, then uh, we will start again. Come on, Lecture. Hello everyone again. Uh, now uh, let me share quiz link. Now we will be sharing quiz link. Uh, you will find that uh, that in chat section. Before that,
okay uh, now the remaining part of the session uh, will uh, be resumed by saurav sir after this session we also have practice session for sql so uh, for this session saurav sir will continue from now uh, after this session we will have quiz and after the quiz we will uh, start uh, practice session on zoom so over to you saurav sir yeah uh, thank you sirok sir so we will uh, discuss the union i hope you have you might have heard the word set operators so what are the set operators in sql can anyone let me know in the chat what are the set operators yes anyone responses in chat what are the set operators let me okay so in set operators we have union union all distinct and minus so these are the four types of the set operators that we have in our uh, this because i can say in sql so there are the some rules that we uh, let me share my screen yes so the rules that we should kept in mind while dealing with the set operators is that whenever you we use set operators we can see that here we here we have two tables the name of the table one is u1 and the second we have the table u2 and what we will do is we will apply the set operator which is union and union all so in my sql uh, only union and union all we can implement we cannot use another two set operators which are the minus and intersect so my sql does not support the minus and intersect operator so the condition that we should kept in mind while dealing with the set operator is that the name of the columns might be different but number of the columns their data type and the sequence must be same for application of the set operator so now what we will do is we will simply uh, demonstrate the practical part of the union and union one so now what i will do is i will use the simply select and here i will pass the name of the column the first column is id comma name comma then we have here city from we are getting this uh, these rows from u1 and here we will uh, i make sure is my screen might be yeah is the screen visible to you Yeah, I think these are the some mistake that I have made. Yes. So what you are we are doing? We are. Yeah, so just let me uh, let's zoom it so that you can see my screen. Yes. So what we will do is we are selecting ID, name, and city from U1, and here we will apply the set operator, which is union. union and again we will use the select statement select and what we are selecting is we are select select no comma first name here sorry here we have first name and, and then we will print the location so our, uh, location from the another table and the name of that table is u2 so you can see that what this union is doing is here we have a table u1 and here the second table is u so what any union is doing is union is merging the data here we have u1 table and here we have u2 table so what union is doing union is making a combination of u1 and u2 and it is storing the combination of our u1 and u2 table 
means we are getting the result as a segregate. So we can see that we have Aman, Pune, Mukesh, Nasik. We have uh, my laptop is getting discharged. So just please uh, let me uh, connect it to the charger. Yeah. So just give me a minute. Just let me connect. Let me connect my charger and then we will discuss about this set of operator union in which we are dealing with the table. Yeah. In which we are dealing with the table, this U and N, U2. Okay. So we can see that here the Aman Pune and Aman Pune. The first record of both the tables is same. And here we can see that when we have used the word union, it is the duplicate records by default. What happens in union is by default, union will not uh, repeat the duplicate records. As we can see in this table, we have Aman Pune only one time, but Aman Pune is present in our U2 table as well as Aman Pune is present in my U1 table. So by default, union will remove the duplicate records. Let's say if we want to display the duplicate records, in that case, what we will do is instead of you, instead of using the set operator union, what we will do is we will use the word here union all. So what union all will do is union all will union all will also display the repeated records. So let me execute this command. So here we can see that in union all we have this Aman Pune and again Aman one Pune is repeating as I have used the union all operator. And in the first case that where we have used only union in this, there is only one Aman and Pune. So this is the basic difference between union and union all. So if you want to practice other two set operator like minus and intersect, so my SQL does not support these uh, set operators, which is minus set operator and intersect set operator. So if you want to uh, see the practical implementation of this union and minus, so for that, you can use the MS SQL server, which is uh, our DBMS of Microsoft company. There you can uh, practice the this intersect, intersect and minus. The syntax will be the same. Just uh, what, what let me uh, help you with that. What will be the changes in the syntax? The, Instead of union, you just have to put here intersect. And if you're using the minus, then you just have to replace the name of the set operator and rest of the condition and uh, the implementation part will be the same. So this is the day two bootcamp of the SQL where we have started our discussion with the subqueries. In subqueries, we have in uh, this a query inside uh, another query. Then we have uh, come to the concept of the joints where we have seen the inner joint, we have seen the left joint, and these are right joint. Uh, and we also have a full joint, which again, the latest version of this MySQL does not uh, support the uh, this full joint. And then we have discussed the set operators, union and union all. We have also discussed the this uh, aggregate function. Uh, which are minimum, maximum, we have average, then we have counts. These are the aggregate functions that we use. So let me ask you a simple question that may arise in your interview. Let's say you have, we have a command or we have a query in which we can implement the concepts of subqueries as well, and we can implement the join. So what my question is, uh, if you want, if I give you an option that you have two options, you have to uh, do this uh, solve a particular query with join, or you have to solve a particular query with the sub queries concept. So, what will you prefer? Will you prefer join or will you prefer sub queries? Can I get responses in chat? Yes, anyone? Okay, so okay, let me answer this question. Although 
the whenever we use the join it might be uh, i can say a little bit complex to under, understand but whenever you have a option between sub queries and joins i suggest you go with the join because the execution of the join is very fast as in join we are writing only a single query what uh, what we are doing in join is we are writing a single query but in sub query we are writing a query inside another query so what happens is that calculation on multiple values return a single value okay right project projecta is saying join and kapil is also saying join yeah you both are right we will go with the join because the execution of the join is much faster as compared as compared to the sub queries so okay guys so we will uh, this the attendance code for today's session will be sql16 i repeat the session code the session code for today's uh, this will be sql16 and uh, this you have to fill a quiz uh, the link of the quiz you can uh, see uh, sorry the link of the quiz you can see in this uh, chat uh, you have to fill it fill the quiz this quiz will be based on the the topics which we have discussed like aggregate functions sub queries joins and union after filling the quiz uh, we will share uh, another link with you that link will be regarding the uh, completion of the assignment so there you can uh, you can this go to that particular link where you have to use the university data set in that data set you have to create few of the tables and what you have to do is you have to do the implementation of the joins so if you all are we have, all are good till this point we are i think are clear with the session code which is sql16 and i hope that you have received the uh, this the assignment link assignment link and the quiz submission link so okay guys uh, thanks for joining this uh, sql boot camp uh, session uh, okay thanks for joining over to you suyog sir yeah, thank you hello uh, thank you saurav sir uh, yeah. now we have shared a link of quiz in our chat box and also let me uh, quickly announce yesterday's uh, quiz winner so for yesterday's quiz we have winner of uh, the name is rahul prasad so we congratulate rahul prasad for winning yesterday's quiz uh, today now let's see who will win today's quiz i hope every one of you will uh, solve the quiz and after the quiz uh, in about 10 to 15 minutes we will be starting uh, practice session for sql so the link for that zoom section uh, zoom session we will be sharing in the all our whatsapp group uh, thank you all for joining today uh, see you in 15 minutes